Welcome to London's premier fabric emporium. You're in luck. A fresh shipment of the most beautiful British fabric was delivered to my warehouse this very morning. If everything goes well, I'm going to be swimming in cash. If not, I'll lose my life savings. <laughs> ah, someone wants to buy something. I'll be right with you. Rubbish. That's the third customer today asking for Indian calico. In case you lay people do not know what calico is, that is how people refer to all cotton textiles these days. And no one, not one person, seems to be asking for English textiles. Every single one of them asks for Indian textiles. By the 1750s, Indian textiles had become famous across Asia, Africa, and Europe from the time the Europeans found these markets. The Europeans seem to be very good at finding things that are not lost. Soon, European trading companies began purchasing Indian textiles in huge quantities. According to a ledger, around 589,000 pieces of cloth were ordered. One piece of fabric is usually 20 yards long and a yard wide. And these orders had to be placed two years in advance. Why on earth would you wait two years for a piece of cloth? when you can walk right in here and buy good old English fabric right now. European trading companies showed interest in buying Indian fabric. And their popularity is such that certain Indian words even found their way into English and other European languages. Portuguese spice traders were the first to come across fine cotton textile at an Indian port, Calicut. And they tweaked the name of the port just a tad and named the fabric Calico. Calicut, Calico. And in a few decades, all cotton textiles came to be called Calico. And this fabric, my fabric, which was made in London, people call this calico too. Another thing people won't stop yapping about is muslin. The Europeans first encountered this smooth, finely woven Indian fabric in Mosul, in Iraq. Since then, any cloth that is smooth and finely woven has been referred to as muslin. Printed cotton clothes came to be called chintz, derived from the chint, a cloth with flowery designs on it. Oh, there's more. They have started calling any brightly colored scarf a bandana, actually referring to bandhana, an Indian method of tying and dyeing. Do you know what's shocking? The queen wears Indian fabric. The queen of England. What happened to Macon Britain? But I can't blame her. The print and the colors on the cloth make it quite irresistible. Do you want to know a secret? I have a few muslin hankies too. Here, look at the patola and the jamdani weaves. Patola weaving on muslin cloth is done in Surat, Ahmedabad and Patan in the Indian subcontinent. The Jamdani weave is made in Dhaka and Lucknow. Oh, 
Rich people sure do love their fancy clothes and their fine fabrics. Owing to popular demand, European traders purchase fabrics from specific places in India, like Kasim Bazar, Charpur, Patna, Calcutta, and Orissa. Pfft, the obsession with Indian fabric, I tell you. Keep this between us. The British had no choice but to trade in textiles because the Dutch had dominated the spice trade. And India has always been the world leader in cotton textile production. The weavers in India sure spend hundreds of man hours making something so marvelous. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.